and entrepreneurs' low points reveal a lot about how they reach their high points. Yes, talent is extraordinarily important, but without durable relationships, timing, empathy, vision, and hard work, it probably won't amount to much. That's why Hart can afford the office, why he has a career strong enough to weather a personal crisis, and why he has built a company to last. When why he has a career strong enough to weather a personal crisis and why he has a company built to last. Quote, when you patiently wait, you patiently take steps, you don't rush it, you're able to put yourself in a position to win, unquote, Hart says. Quote, so many people want to do it all in one day. It's not a day thing. I waited until the time was right for me to go after what I can. Unquote. Interesting. This is a very interesting article. I think one of the most interesting things, it it makes no mention of Kevin Hart's appearances on and how black entertainment television, BET, was a resource in promoting his celebrity and his projects, right? And also providing employment opportunities for his sizable entourage, right? All these people that were employed as writers, you know, we know from the writer's strike, it's a difficult, you know, it's a difficult job to do. And it doesn't necessarily lend um, financial stability. If you're a touring comedian, if you're, you know, a comedy writer, that there were these, you know, pockets of money that were provided, whether it was on award shows or on series that were, also supports and distribution arms to get eyeballs and you know let people feel a sense of momentum and excited excitement about the heart the Kevin Hart heartbeat brand right he doesn't talk about that also doesn't talk about you know there's just a few there's a few things that were going on that weren't really mentioned. And, you know, I think it's interesting that Tiffany Haddish has been one of his protégés and he's defended her in public. Um, And people have raised, I think, questions about why her? Why her in particular? You have dozens of successful touring writing comedians but she was the choice and we see where you know where it's all come to now those high-powered films have not allowed her to blossom into a a strong resilient touring stand-up comedian right a writing stand-up comedian and you know I feel like the organization was caught kind of off its heels by this whole Club Shay Shay moment. You know, Plastic Cup Boys, it was weak. Tiffany's response, weak. I I kind of in my in my personal way, I expected more from people who are professional comedians, right? It really does kind of leave you scratching your head like, well, where's the beef? So much <clears throat> comedy expertise, so much, you know, when it when it comes to this moment, when it's like, okay, play the dozens. We've seen Wild and Out for years, right? It's part of black culture. Like, that's the, that's it? Or were they pulling their punches? Or are we kind of stumbling into, you know, someone's hand, someone's money, someone's business acumen being at play here. And it's not what this article would have you believe, right? The people who are pulling the marionette strings probably love, it's like Jaclyn Hill in makeup. Jaclyn Hill told us, oh, I'm a small business owner. I invest in my own money into this and I'm so independent and da 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 and it took us years to unravel that that was all marketing and a story, right? If it's real, 
if this is, you know, talent and writing and so much brilliant, it's not like Dave Chappelle runs out of steam. Quality, <laughs> quality issues and, you know, a, a curious fascination with trans women aside, he doesn't stop making stand-up specials. But, oh, it's it's not the business model. It's not the whatever. It's like, what what's, you know, what's going on here? Who's making the money? If it's independent and self-funded, that's one thing. But if it's Lionsgate and it's Three Arts and it's, you know, Universal, ultimately, is it self-funded? Is there a self-funded moment? Is it, like, what is it? Like, I'm really... You know, I'm a fan, I'm a supporter, but I'm really trying to understand the mechanics of the talk, the talk, the talk and the marketing language, right? Because your name is on it and there's a bunch of different businesses and because there are writers and there's staff. And if it's so relationship oriented and so much about respect, why are all these like people who were inside the circle coming and hurling such huge pot shots, right? All this scandal, all this, all these shenanigans, you know, a bitter taste in a bunch of people's mouths. It doesn't make sense because the rising tide lifts all boats, right? I think the other part (laughs) that's hard to kind of bring up, it's like, yeah, didn't talk about BET, didn't talk about, you know, um, Jeff Clanagan as well, how Will Packer as well, how people look at the black community and black audiences much the same way that Tyler Perry does. It's an, it's a, it's an endless resource to farm profits out of. But where in this article is there a discussion of how important it was to be a black man and have, have that audience reliably showing up to see him? This article has written itself like, yeah, black parentheses to the side, whereas I feel like that's a much more important part of how, you know, Kevin Hart advanced, became prominent, and could, you know, be a profitable artist, but yet it doesn't even get mentioned in this article. And then on top of it, I I think that there's a lot to be said about entourage culture right who gets put on in these situations are they the most talented are they you know on the up and up is it true that these you know people are raising questions about did the extorters extort or were they set up as patsies aunt sally's to take the blame when there was something else going on right you have a whole bunch of people hanging on the skirts of someone who's super successful. Right. And, and I think, what is his name? Louis Anderson talked about this, how much those friends, relatives, in-laws, whomever feel like they deserve your resources, feel like they should be first in line for a job on your productions, your shows, whether they're talented or not. Right. And it becomes this culture that, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be hanging around and covering things up and, you know, they're along for the ride. It doesn't matter what bullshit goes on. They, they, they want to get their beak wet and they're going to keep getting it wet and getting other things wet too. As long as the, as long as the gravy train is still full of gravy and it doesn't necessarily deserve the moniker professional. But this is an interesting discussion, both for what it says and what it doesn't. I'd love to know what your opinion is. And this was published in 2018. So we know now we've advanced (laughs) several years, several scandals, and perhaps several children. Um, yeah. Anyway, more to come about Dave Becky and who he is and where he came from and what he did to, you know, raise some eyebrows with Louis C.K. and some other exciting clients. (laughs) It's interesting to see who gets discussed as being the clients and who doesn't get mentioned at all. But 
very interesting. <laughs>